When charging your EV, there's no place like home. In fact, over 90% of EV charging happens at home. But choosing the right EV charger and making sure it plays nice with your solar and home battery can feel overwhelming. It might be tempting to just grab the cheapest charger you can find online, call up your local Sparky and ask them to install it. But trust me, that's a recipe for a charger that doesn't play nice with your electricity tariff, solar or home battery, making your EV charging more expensive than it needs to be. Stick with me and I'll show you how to choose the right EV charger and find an electrician who knows their stuff to install and integrate it with your home. Let's talk about one term that you'll hear me throwing around a lot in this guide, kilowatts. When talking about EV charging, power measured in kilowatts is all about how fast your EV battery is charging. The higher the kilowatts, the faster your car is gonna charge. Charging at one kilowatt will add about five kilometers every hour. Charging at 10 kilowatts will therefore add about 50 kilometers every hour. Chargers deliver those kilowatts using either alternating current, AC, or direct current, DC, to charge your car's battery. Home EV chargers use AC. They simply take the AC power from the grid and push it straight into your car. Your car then converts the AC into DC power, which is what EV batteries use to charge. Now, here's where home chargers differ from larger public chargers you might have seen around town. Those public chargers shoot DC electricity directly into the car battery, and that means they can charge your EV up to 50 times faster than a typical home setup. Check out the difference between the plugs on my AC home charger and a public DC fast charger. The AC charger sports a Type 2 plug, while the DC fast charger rocks a monster CCS2 plug. People ask me if it's possible to have a DC fast charger at home. Look, technically, yes, but the costs involved can be astronomical. If you're not a zillionaire, an AC home charger is the way to go. If you're in the market for a home EV charger, let's start with the basics. The slow trickle chargers, also known as level one EV chargers. Most cars come with these trickle chargers for free, except for Teslas. Tesla's mobile connector will set you back 550 bucks, or you can buy cheaper third-party mobile connectors for about $350. The great thing about trickle chargers is that they plug straight into a standard power point, so they don't need any special installation, unless you need to add a new power point near your parking spot. Now, here's a pro tip. Be careful if you're using an extension cord to charge your EV. A modern EV will be putting 10 amps through that extension cord for hours on end. That extension cord you picked up at Big W that claims to be rated at 10 amps is unlikely to be rated to charge at full current for hours on end and could overheat with disastrous results. Please invest in a dedicated power point close to your car for regular charging. A standard power point and mobile charger delivers about 10 kilometers of range for every hour of charging. Let's say you've got a low range car with a 300 kilometer range. With a trickle charger, you'll wait 30 hours for a full charge. If you're Terry Titas relying on a trickle charger for your EV, you might need to keep it plugged in all day to get those kilometers in. Now there are downsides to this. First up, time of use electricity plans. If you're charging during the evening peak, usually between 4 p.m. and 10 p.m., your electricity bills can skyrocket. Sure, you could set a timer in your car to not charge during peak hours, but then you might not have enough time to fully charge by the morning. Trust me, you don't need that stress. And if you're charging from solar, you might only have a window of three to four hours each day when you've got enough excess solar to charge your car. Outside of these hours, your dumb mobile charger will be pulling electricity from the grid, which can be up to 10 times more expensive than your cheap solar electricity. Finally, safety. Some old power points can't handle that constant high amps that the car charging demands. If you're constantly pulling 10 amps from a single power point, any wiring issues in your home will rear their ugly head, from tripping breakers to more serious hazards, like overheating plugs and even fires. Some of the better mobile chargers out there can sense high temperatures and turn down or even trip off to prevent overheating, but not all have this feature, and do you really want to rely on it while your family is sleeping? So, while trickle chargers are cheap, they're a pain in the ass if they're your only option for charging at home. It's like filling a swimming pool with a garden hose. Yeah, eventually it gets the job done, 
but God, it's painfully slow. Now, to preempt all the comments from folks who don't drive much and love their little mobile chargers, I get it, I get it. Your car's daily trek might just be the commute to work and a quick dash to the shop. You're not the type who wakes up and decides to drive across the state on a whim, and you always remember to plug in your EV every night without fail. If that's your routine, a slow charger might not bother you. You do you, no worries. For the rest of us, whose lives aren't as reliably consistent, or just want the peace of mind knowing we can top up quickly whenever we need to, a faster, hardwired charger is the proper tool for the job. A hardwired EV charger like this one can charge at seven kilowatts on a single phase home and up to 22 kilowatts on a three phase home. That's three to 10 times faster than your standard mobile connector. To achieve these speeds, you need a dedicated cable from the charger all the way back to your switchboard. To charge at more than seven kilowatts, you'll need three things a three-phase supply to your home, a three-phase charger, and a car that can charge faster than seven kilowatts. For example, BYDs simply can't charge faster than seven kilowatts from a home charger. A Mini can charge at 10 kilowatts from a three-phase charger. Recent Teslas can charge at 11 kilowatts from a three-phase home charger. If you want to make the most of three-phase home charging speeds, you'll need to be the kind of person that drives a Porsche. And the brand new Porsche. A Porsche taken to be specific. It's the only EV in Australia I know of that can charge at the full 22 kilowatts at home. Now, if there's only one feature your charger must have, in my opinion, it's OCPP compatibility. OCPP stands for Open Charge Point Protocol. With OCPP, your charger can talk to other devices and hook up with third-party services that can help you charge smarter and cheaper. If your charger speaks OCPP, you can add most of the other fancy features you might need with just a software update. The next feature to think about is extra cable length. Trust me, you want a long one. <laughs> naughty, naughty. Opt for an untethered charger and snag a Type 2 to Type 2 cable that's long enough to reach your car no matter how you park it. I've got a 10 meter long cable for my driveway and it's great. After that comes timers. A timer can be your best friend if you're on a time of use electricity tariff. Set it to charge when electricity is cheaper and your wallet will thank you. Most EVs let you set a timer with the actual car, but it's easier to let the charger handle it, especially if you're juggling multiple cars. And if you've got a charger in a shared space or a sneaky neighbor, a pin code or RFID card can make sure that only people you've authorized can use your electricity. If you want to compare different home EV chargers, check out my constantly updated EV charger comparison table. It's linked in the description. It's got all the info you need to choose the right EV charger for your home. Now, let's talk about the most basic type of hardwired home EV charger, the dumb charger. Don't let the name fool you. These chargers are still a big step up from your standard mobile connector. Here's how a dumb charger works. Every time you plug in your EV, the charger will simply charge that EV as fast as it possibly can. It's a straightforward, no frills approach to charging. Plug in, charge up and go. It really doesn't get much simpler than that. Now with a smart charger, you're in the driver's seat. A smart charger gives you control over when and how your car charges. It can decide whether to charge or not and even adjust the charging speed based on a number of factors such as the time of day, the cost of electricity if you're on a variable tariff, how much excess solar power you're generating, and how much your battery is charged, as well as a few other things. For example, you have solar and it's a sunny day. Your smart charger can detect that you have excess solar power and automatically start charging to take advantage of that cheap energy. Now, if you've got a small solar array, solar smart charging might leave you feeling pretty frustrated because your charging speeds can be slow, especially in bad weather. That's why many new EV owners end up getting more solar panels too. I recommend a minimum system size of 10 kilowatts worth of solar panels. Now, ultimately smart chargers, although they cost more, will save you money while reliably charging your EV. And the fact that they can avoid peak periods means they're better for the grid too. It's why I have one and I recommend that you get one too. Now, let's talk about the nitty gritty of EV charger supply and install costs. You can find a heap of dirt cheap options out there, but the most affordable single phase EV charger I feel comfortable recommending 
is the Tesla wall connector. It works for both single and three phase power. Now here's a pro tip. Don't buy the hardware from Tesla, buy it through your installer. That way your installer is responsible for both the hardware and the installation warranty. You really don't want to go back and forth between Tesla and your Sparky trying to work out whose fault it is if something goes wrong. The Tesla wall connector is compatible with most modern EVs, but it's important to note that apart from a simple timer, it's a pretty dumb charger. It doesn't have any native solar smart charging capabilities unless you're fully invested in the whole Tesla ecosystem. That's a Tesla power wall and obviously a Tesla car. On the other end of the spectrum, the most expensive home charger I know of in Australia is the Kiba Key Contact P30 X series, which will set you back a whopping 3,300 Aussie dollars. Now, I just don't see any need to spend that kind of coin on a home charger. Most home EV chargers with a solid set of features should cost you about $1,500 for the hardware. Now let's talk about the other half of the equation, installation costs. This is where things can get a bit more complicated as the price can vary a lot depending on how hard the install is. In a best case scenario, if you're installing a single phase charger right next to your switchboard, you might be looking at installation costs as low as $300. However, if you need to run a long power cable, dig trenches or upgrade your switchboard, integrate with solar or a battery, the installation cost can quickly climb into thousands. For most homes, expect to pay a thousand to fifteen hundred bucks for the installation on top of the hardware cost. When you're shopping for a home EV charger, you want to make sure it's compatible with your car or you'll be in for a nasty surprise when it comes time to charge. The good news is, unless you're driving a vintage EV, so pre-2020, or you have a special import, you'll need a charger with a Type 2 plug like this. To double check, you can take a look at the charging socket on your car. It should look something like this. Now, you might have noticed that the socket looks a bit different than the plug. The bottom two pins are DC. They're designed for fast DC public charging stations like this one. DC chargers can operate between 50 and 350 kilowatts, which is up to 50 times faster than your home AC charging station, if your car can handle that speed. If you have a home battery, it's usually best to save the energy in the battery for your home, not to empty it into your car. The foolproof way to stop this from happening is with a fairly simple wiring change. Ask your installer to connect the charger to the mains upstream of the battery and solar consumption meter and move the battery's current sensor so it can't see the EV charger. This means the house battery will never see your charger. It simply doesn't know it exists and will not discharge the battery to meet the load of the car. Now, if your EV charger is the same brand as your home battery or battery inverter, then you should be able to do this with software. No wiring hacks required. And that's a better solution in my opinion. So, what are some of the best EV chargers out there? I'd be happy to recommend any of these brands to a friend. But, I also asked over 500 Aussie installers in my network what EV charger they'd slap on their own wall if money was no object. And boy, did they have some opinions. The clear winner? The Fronius Watt Pilot. Now, it might cost 1800 bucks, but if you've already got a Fronius inverter, it's a natural fit. But what if you're on a tighter budget? Well, our installers had a pick for that too the old faithful Tesla wall connector. Now, I know some of you might be thinking, but Finn, I don't have Tesla, or but Finn, Elon Musk's a douchebag. But this charger works with any modern EV and it won't break the bank and it's really well made. The catch, it's a bit of a dumb charger, lacking some of the fancy smart features because Tesla have put all the smarts into their cars instead. So if you don't have the Tesla car, you're gonna be missing some features. Now, I've gotta give a shout out to my personal pick, the Delta AC Max Smart. Sure, it only got two votes from my installers, but hear me out. I've got a bit of history with Delta from my days working on nuclear power stations, and I can tell you they make some top-notch gear that I'd trust to run at a fission reactor. But here's the real pro tip, folks. Stay in your solar inverter ecosystem. If you've already got solar, buying your EV charger from the same brand as your inverter or battery is a really smart move. It's like making sure all your appliances play nice together. Fronius, Goodwee, Solar Edge, and SunGrow, they all make EV chargers that should work seamlessly with their own gear. EVs these days aren't just for driving. They can power your appliances. That's called V2L. They can feed energy back to the grid. That's called V2G, or even keep running your whole house. 
that's called V2H. V2L is perfect for emergencies when you need to power something like a fridge. V2G is all about making some extra cash by selling your car's energy back to the grid when grid demand is high. And V2H, it turns your EV into a full-blown home battery system. But there's a catch. You need a special bi-directional EV charger to unlock the magic of V2H and V2G. Besides starting at 10 grand for that charger, grid regulations allowing their installation have a lot of catching up to do in Australia. So, which EVs are ready to power your whole life? There's one, the Nissan Leaf Gen 2. But you're not out of luck if you've got a V2L compatible car like the Hyundai Ioniq 5 or the Kia EV6. With a smart electrician, you can get your car to power some home circuits. But bear in mind, those cars can only deliver two to three kilowatts. That's about one coffee machine. And what about Tesla? Well, they've got their own thing, as they would, called Tesla PowerShare. Unfortunately, right now, it's only available in America and only if you have a Powerwall 3, a Tesla wall connector, and a Cybertruck. So, to wrap up, first things first, go for a hardwired level two charger for your home. Then you've got the charging power to juice up your EV from empty to full overnight. So you're always ready to hit the road in the morning. And keep that mobile charger in your boot for emergencies. You never know when you might need a top up. If you're one of the lucky ones with a three-phase supply to your house, don't mess around. Get yourself a three-phase charger and enjoy the faster home charging. It'll only cost a couple of hundred bucks more to install the three-phase option and you'll be both future-proof and ready to charge that midlife crisis Porsche taken at the full 22 kilowatts. If you don't have solar or have a smaller solar system, you'll want to upgrade to at least 10 kilowatts of solar panels. EVs are energy hungry and rooftop solar is absolutely the cheapest way to charge them. But what about charging at those public fast DC chargers? Save those for your road chips. They might be speedy, but they're also about 10 times more expensive than charging from your rooftop solar. So there you have it, my guide to EV home charging in Australia. Invest in a level two charger, go big on solar, and save the public chargers for your cross-country adventures. If you're ready to buy an EV charger, I can help you get quotes for quality home charging systems that will play nice with your solar and even home battery from pre-vetted installers that know what they're doing. Just visit my site, solarquotes.com.au, pop your postcode into the box, fill in the form, and I'll take it from there.